All right, so I'm going to show how to do a, a simple intersection in Business Center uh, Heavy Construction Edition. And to begin with, what you see on the screen is we already have an alignment for what is our primary road, which is, is this road uh, down here kind of running uh, east to west. And then we have our secondary road coming off of it heading to the north. Uh, we've already built two corridors with a typical template running through the, uh, the roadways. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up. We, we actually have to insert a template in this area in here, and we'll show you how to do that. And then we'll have to clean up the curb returns and clean this uh, road up here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to start this corridor, this, this north corridor, or secondary road corridor. It's starting at station 20 plus zero. So we actually want to push it back to the returns. So we're going to go over to the Project Explorer, and I'm going to right-click on that template and click uh, click on edit and or actually sorry not edit but uh, properties so we're going to right click and go to properties we're going to change the beginning station so that it starts basically at the end of this return so I'm just going to right click and we're going to go to station at point and I'm going to snap to the end of that return right here so that's that's the return we want right there so you see it moves that corridor and starts it back here, kind of creating this area. So we'll click OK to that, and we'll click Close. Next, what we're going to do is come in here, and we're going to put a template in this area through here. Now the first thing we need to do is go in and take a look at this template and kind of get our particulars. So if we edit that template, we can see you know, what it's made up of. Now looking at this, this roadway here, if we zoom in, it looks like the return is back here and there's this uh, so basically what it looks like is the lane doesn't go all the way out to, to pick up the edge of pavement the edge of pavement should be out here and it's actually a little bit short so instead of it being 12 feet uh, it should be 13 so what we're going to do first is we're going to edit this template changing these lanes so that instead of it being a 12 foot offset we'll make it a 13 foot offset because that's our our lane width and that way it pushes the edge of pavement back to that area up in there. So we'll do the same thing for the other side. We'll save that, which will push that, push that out. So now it's touching that, that line which represents our edge of pavement, and that's what we want to tie it to. And if, if it should be 12, then we would have to then come in and adjust this line work so that that curve, curve return actually comes back in and touches you know, back in here. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, close this. And actually, we'll have to go back into that. So we'll go back and uh, we'll edit to bring up the, uh, the editor again. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert a new template. So I'm going to come up to the edit corridor template, and we'll insert a new template uh, for the corridor. And it's going to ask for the beginning station, so our stationing is running left to right. And again, same idea as we're going to go right to the end of this, this return here. So um, I know you can hover over and snap, but just to be sure, I'm going to right click, go station at point. If you know the stationing, obviously there's all kinds of ways to enter in uh, that data. But I, I can see here and know that I'm snapping to that point right there. All right, so we're going to insert a template at that location. And we'll come back. And we're going to do a new definition, and we'll just call this... Uh, We'll just call it intersection for now, and I'll click insert. And what we're going to do is we're just going to define the the road length or the road lanes. Uh, we would build out the the right hand side of the road all the way to match the existing corridor, uh, but just for right now, just for demonstration, I'm just going to build the lanes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go from the Proposed road using offset and slope instruction. We'll go 12 and we'll go negative 2, which is our lane, and we'll just call that EOP right. So that's edge of pavement right. And we'll add that lane, which then you'll see we'll build out that portion of the road. Okay. Then we do the same thing. We'll go from the, and I'm not using mirror, and I'll show you why here because I'm not going to build out the whole thing. So what, what we could do is I could come in here and we're going to change it to offset elevation, and we're going to offset this one uh, one foot, all right? So we're going one foot to the right, and it was a 0.33 elevation difference, 
and we'll call that TC and we'll add that um, and you can see it's just building out that piece so you would build out the right side of the road all the way to you hit you know matching what's going on on the incoming template uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go back and build the other side so I'm gonna build this side we'll go negative 13 um, and we'll go negative 2 and that's gonna build the lane we'll call that EOP left and that's gonna build the lane for the left side of the road alright so now we have that so basically now what we need to do is we need to restart this template back over here so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to insert a, another template and we're going to begin it at the end of this return. So I'm going to right click and we're going to go uh, station from snap, right click, endpoint, and I'll grab that point right there. So again, accepting that and we don't need to do a new definition. We're just going to reference the definition and we're going to reference this one because it's going to be the same typical cross section that we used over here so there's no sense of rebuilding it so we'll insert that so that way if this changes this changes and we've got our our road being built you know, all the way through so now that we've defined that now I'm going to go ahead and close this what we need to do is to uh, add in some information to create the returns to tie this all together now you could use just some line strings and add them as brake lines merging these two surfaces together um, I kind of like using the, you know, continuing with the corridor and the corridor pieces. So what I'm going to do is we'll take a look at this uh, curb return here. And, you know, again, the way the geometry was created, it creates an arc. That line could go all the way through, but we're just going to build a corridor in this section right in through here. So I'm going to go up, and the first thing I need to do is create an alignment. So we're going to call this return uh, left just because it's on the left side of the road. I'm going to use an existing line, which is the CAD line I have selected, or the arc, and we'll click OK. So that creates that alignment for the return. Now we need to create the vertical alignment. So we'll create a vertical intersection. And we're just going to use two points. We're going to elevate this end and elevate that end. We could put a higher or low spot in the middle if you had a drainage structure that you wanted to uh, grade to. Uh, but basically what it's going to do now is you know you've got your vertical design to here. You've got your vertical design through here. What we're going to do is we're going to match the elevation there, match the elevation there, and it'll do a transition through that curve. So what I'm going to do here for the vertical is we're going to start, and it's at zero station, which is right there, which is fine. But the elevation, what we're going to do is we're going to get the elevation from the surface. So when I click on that, I can choose the corridor uh, phase 5 which grabs that elevation right there and throws it into the elevation edit field. I'm going to add another grade break and that grade break is going to be back here where that alignment ends so that's the end station and the same thing with the elevation I'm going to grab this end and we'll grab that corridor for our secondary road leading you know going over there so that's the elevation so now we've elevated and created basically a transition uh, from here to there. All right, so that's just the alignment. So now we can close that and we can go ahead and define or create the corridor. So we'll call this return left again and leave all this the way it is. We're using that alignment, that vertical. Uh, we'll leave this, you know, pretty much all the way uh, set the way it is. You could reference these surfaces, but I'm just going to click OK. Now it's going to ask me for my beginning station. Again, we want to start at the beginning of that return. It's going to be a new definition. We'll call it return left. And then what we'll do here is because we're only building from the curb out, we're going to start with the offset elevation from the return left point. And we're going to offset it that one foot that we did, but we're actually going to the left, so it's going to be a negative one. And then our elevation difference will be 0.33, and we'll call this TC for top of curb, and we'll click on add for that. Now, you can see that it's coming in here and it's not defined real well, so what you're going to want to do is go into that return left corridor properties, and you're going to want to come down here and tell it to densify 
that surface. So we'll click on yes, and you can see now it gives us a nice smooth transition through that curve. Okay. So next, we would come in and we would do that next piece. So that next piece coming is going to be an offset slope, and it's going to come from the top of curb. It's going to be a negative 2 offset, and it's going to be a 2% slope. And we'll call that uh, front edge of walk or FW, we'll add that piece. So that adds in that one. And we'll do the same thing for the last sidewalk piece, which would be a negative four with a slope of two. And we'll pick PW for that one for the back of walk. And we'll click OK. And now you've got that section of the return or intersection built. So if we take a look at this in 3D, you'll see that it, um, you'll start to see the alignment in the corridor model being built. All right, so we zoom in here. You can see how it's all basically tying together. So we would repeat the same process for this over here, this one over here. Um, then you're gonna merge all these, uh, basically the surfaces together and you'll create a break line down the center of this crown. And what that's going to do is it's gonna create the triangulation from this return to the center here, and it's going to go to the center here. You may put a, a maybe a break line through there, depending on what you want the grades to do. But that's basically how you're going to tie this all together. Um, again, you'd build this side out. So um, I'm going to build it, and I'll show you what it looks like here uh, in just a second. Okay, so I went through and I built the other other side of the road using the uh, same method I did over here. The zero station though is up here and it goes this way to the ending station down here. So you just gotta make sure you know, your offsets are going in the uh, proper direction. So now what we need to do is we need to combine all this into uh, basically into one surface. So what you can do is if you go over to surfaces, you've got your existing surface, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create or merge surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on merge surfaces and we're gonna give it a new name and we'll call it combined. We're combining these together. Actually, I'm just going to go combine one to start with. So actually, at the end, I'm going to call it combined. So I'm going to start by combining the main corridor with the secondary road. So the primary road and the secondary road. Not worried about the clipping boundary. I'll click OK. And what that does, it combines this um, with with this surface. And to kind of clean this up, so you can see what happens. Uh, what we can do is we can go to our view filter and let's hide that surface we'll hide these surfaces so all we're left with is a combine you can see the combine uh, being shown there so we'll go back to project explorer we'll do the same thing we'll now merge surfaces we will uh, call this combine 2 and what we will do is we will combine the combined surface and we will add in the left return and we'll click OK and then it should show up over here in our, our surface and then we will do the same thing and we'll call this finally combined we'll call it combined all if we want we'll take the combined two that we just did and we'll add in the right return that. So now it's building us basically one surface. So now if we look at in 3D view, you can see we got the kind of the gore all filled in. Um, we don't need these other surfaces, so we can go ahead and you know we can delete the combined two and then the combined one leaving the combined all. All right, just kind of doing a little cleanup there so that we don't have that. So now you see we've got a combined surface and you see how it ties in the intersections and everything. Now, in some cases, depending on how it triangulated, if it's triangulating across your crown, you're gonna to wanna to add a brake line uh, to define your crown so that it doesn't triangulate across. But in this case, it looks like uh, it worked out fairly, uh, fairly well for us. Um, you know, again, we can go back and build out the other side of this road here, but um, it's basically the way that you can tie these two roads and corridors to make one surface model uh, for an intersection.